Hello friends and beautiful people. I thought I would give you an update on everything going on on the farm and show you what I'm doing. Mondays are my only day off. It's already after 10 o'clock and I am just now getting outside. I've got issues with my washer and unfortunately I think I'm going to need a new one. So hopefully Hubs can fix it, but I doubt that he can. So here's our current situation. This is the front of the quilt shop, which was once beautiful but all of the cranberry hibiscus when the hurricane came through it all got knocked down and it needs to be tied up part of me says just cut it all back because its purpose was just to protect my lupins which are going to be amazing next year i've got coxcomb almost ready to pull seeds off of some of it i probably could uh pull some off of but right now we're gonna let this go. This really bugs me because this is the front of the quilt shop. So the big tractor died and it's gonna be uh, a lot to get it uh, taken care of. We gotta go get the guy, he's Amish, who's gonna fix it, bring him over here to look at it, and then we take the tractor over to him to fix once we find out what it's gonna be. But all of this, we were gonna keep brush hogged and mowed down all year is all grown up and uh, it's gonna be ugly. Our horseradish is looking pretty decent. There's only, uh, I think we planted six bulbs in there. There's some weeds in there too and evidently Rosie got her hair brushed this morning. Uh, you can see that there. So uh, we have to wait to get a harder frost before we can get in there and dig some of that out and process some of the, uh, <laughs> some of the horseradish. So I'm super stoked. Hub's got some of my uh, compost bins put together. <laughs> I love the sound of the turkeys. I'm sorry, and the roosters and the chickens. We did get rid of our guineas, and I think, uh, I know we're getting rid of the rabbits. The question is, <laughs> how soon? Look, they hear me out here, and so they're all just having a good time. Hang on. It's gonna be loud in here. These are the babies. These are the ones we got at the end of August. We've got the one rooster in here with them. <laughs> but, you know, uh, every other year we buy <laughs> one set of chickens. And this is the ones we got this year. <laughs> they crack me up. Evidently, they love having company. So, I've got a lot I need to get done. And I have to prioritize. With Monday being my only day... It is what it is. And plus it gets dark sooner. I can't come out when the shop closes. So, you know, we'll just work on it as we can. We did take down, hang on here. So this time of year, you take down your purple martin houses to keep other birds from nesting inside. We'll give them a good cleaning. This one over here, we're gonna have to uh, rework a lot of it. It's, it needs some love. And then we're going to use it for a template to make some more because these things are $1,000 a piece. So there's the, the pond. The second batch of stuff that we put in there that was all organic to get rid of cattails really did a good job on them. I think we have to get in the boat though and go around and pull them all up. But I don't know. I'll have to ask Cubs how that works. So here's what's left of the garden I'm gonna have to come down through here and harvest the castor beans so that we've got those for next year the goal is for next year to be able to go ahead and make some castor oil also I do have the equipment to do that now butternut squash we can go ahead and harvest whatever was ready to be ripened. We just kind of left it out here. Um, it's supposed to be better after it gets uh, a frost on it, but the frost doesn't do the plants themselves any good. Zinnias, marigolds, the sunflowers. You notice a lot of the heads are gone off of them. So we need to get out here. The plan, look at all of my uh, birdhouse gourds. Ordinarily, those would be moved into the high tunnel to dry so that they don't mildew. Now I'm going to have to 
I think I know how I'm going to do it in the basement. Uh, since we're running that coal stove there all winter, it'll stay really, the air will stay really dry. I just got to figure out how I'm going to hang them. We've got these nets that are for uh, sports equipment, and I think we're going to use those. But we're going to come down through here. Everybody's been frosted pretty good. We're going to come down through here and pull it all up, but we're going to move it over into this area and burn it off. That way we're putting some nutrients back into the soil. We're going to come in here. We are going to go ahead and till again this year. We are anti-till all the way, but this year we're going to do it. And then I think we're going to black plastic it if we have enough. Um, we really don't have a budget to buy more, so whatever we can, we will. But we will definitely black plastic the parts that were the worst to take care of. At the end of the summer, and I know it happens for a lot of people, we had to let it go. And, you know, unfortunately, we got a lot of grass and that grass has seed. But with that shop hop, that just did me in. So my comfrey, I did not harvest anything off of it this year. This was its first year here, so we'll wait until next year. I do that with a lot of my medicinals. I say that, and my uh, we did harvest a little bit of the fee or few flowers in some of the moringa for, for hubs because he was having a situation. So that needs done, and then this garden needs done. This one's not as bad, even though it kind of looks like it is. I got more dill coming up, which is amazing. I'll probably dig some of this up and put it. I've got a, uh, a planter of herbs that I moved into the house. All of the tops will be taken off of these, assessed and folded up and put away till next year. They don't need to be out here for the winter. We'll get those cleaned out. But here's the bad thing we got going on, and I was hoping I could show it to you. My fennel went nuts. And it's still just going and going. And I was super excited when we were out here the other day because there were bees on it. And then I looked, and they're not bees. They're ground hornets. I didn't know ground hornets uh, even were trying to be pollinators. I just know my experience with them in the past left me in the hospital. So, um... I'm going to have to be mindful as I am out here working on where this ground hornet nest is. I know there's one in the very front field by the popcorn that we did, and hopefully that's the only one. We'll see. I uh, it scared the, the bejeebies out of me, though, that's for sure. Look, I'll go show you. Look at all the dill. So I harvested a bunch and a bunch of seeds. And I'll probably just let it all go until we come out here to get everything ready for next year. Let's go, let's go look at the other fennel and see if I can find any of those ground hornets on there. This other fennel, no exaggeration, is over six feet tall, some of it. And what do we got there? I think we've got one. So I'm up on the hill looking down. Oh, holiness. I think I see where they're coming in and out, but we'll see. I hear them. But yeah, this, this fennel went absolutely crazy. So I will harvest some seeds to replant. A lot of this, I cook with fennel. Uh, I make a lot of Italian dishes with it. I love it with lamb. I love it with meatballs, any kind of Italian dishes that I make, and I like to use some fennel in there. Uh, there's one of my little ground hornets, but I don't think he's going too fast for me to, to get him. So I'll, um, I think I'll leave the, the bulbs. At the old farm, I left them. They ca it came back just as beautiful as the year before, and that was kind of the plan with this all along. Let me show you this. See this? Yep. So we thought it was the cat, but then we figured out it was the raccoon. That used to be 
my beautiful Brussels sprouts. They were huge. Uh, they were popping the top. I was excited. It started to get, you know, a little bit of the drought and we lost them between the drought and everything else going on. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so I got to make decisions. I'll show you the other thing, which is where I'm going to end up today. Um, this I can do anytime. Like I can do this on Saturdays or whatever, and not a lot of people are going to see it. I know this sounds so vain, but I am going to work on something else because it's the first thing everyone sees when they come to see us. Oh, let me show you this real quick. I know this video is getting too long and kind of boring, but my celery is still doing well. I will get in there today though and clean it out a little bit because my goal, my whole reason <laughs> for growing celery, I, I'm being facetious of course, is so that for my Thanksgiving dinner, I can have my celery in my dressing. I, there's just something about it. Let me flip you around again. So there's the fever feel. It did really well. It got nice and bushy. My Menard has got a little bit of uh, mildew on it, but that's okay. If you have a little bit of mildew, you have a little bit of mildew. It's just going to happen. Um, <laughs> you know, some people stress about it, and I see them post it on Facebook. What can I do to get rid of it? Just leave it. There you go. There is my toothache plant. These guys were at death's door, I thought, in the uh, when we had them in the basement. Now, I will take them, and I'm going to make a tincture out of some of them, uh, because the tincture works both for your uh, mouth, as far as numbing for a toothache, but it also works as a topical numb. So if you have, uh, say, Hubs burns himself or something out in the uh, blacksmith shop, and he needs a wound cleaned so that we can put calendula uh, salve or comfrey salve on it, I'm able to just clean it out with that real good to make sure that it does a good job and it's numb. So let me show you this. This is our current situation. <laughs> so down in here is that big beautiful hydrangea. And then there's this. And there's some coral bells in there somewhere. This thing went nuts this year. Another hydrangea. I don't know what this is, but it's out of control. And I'm not sure it's going to stay. My beautiful butterfly bush. This was its first year, and it went bonkers. There's another little hydrangea tucked in there. But then there's this. These are the hollyhocks. And I swear to goodness, I think that Amish lady did this to me just to aggravate me. I love hollyhocks, but not where they are. I like them around the pond or around a barn, but not like as decorative yard flowers. So those have to go. So that was my choice for today. Out of all the things that I could work on, it's that. And then Hubs is going to mow and he's going to weed whip some, I think he said for a couple hours, and then at least the front of it will look a little better. We still got the black plastic down up here, and I think next year this is where I will put my herb garden. I put, uh, we had those in front of the shop at the, the old shop, and then we've got the asters. I'm going to try to grab some seeds from them, because I don't know that they self-seed as well. But all this has got to go, except for the blueberries are out there. Black plastic still on there. We're going to leave it. Moringa needs harvested. It's been frosted on one too many times. I'm still, you can still, because the, I was going to dehydrate it. So it's just kind of dehydrating on the tree. Not ideal. You really want to harvest it before this, but we're going to take it. And we tried to nurse these blueberries back to health. I don't know what my problem is with blueberries. But I suck. 
And I really wanted big, beautiful blueberry bushes. But, you, you know, you learn. Um, I think they actually had, even though, I think they had too much shade. Um, they're in with all those pine needles, and I thought that would be amazing. But I think they got too much shade. So we'll try again. So that's it, friends. That's our update. Um, I'm going to get to work. But until next time, be blessed and be a blessing. Okay, friends, it's the next day. I'll show you that super hack job I did. I was too tired yesterday, and you should have... I mean, my hair looks bad now, but you should have seen it yesterday. All right. We really did the big massacre on these guys. And then there's those. I even jumped in and got all the hollyhocks out. Unfortunately, though, we know I'm going to have that battle again in the spring because they've already dropped their seeds. So let me show you something here. See this big tree here? Well, underneath it, the ducks were laying eggs, and the skunk would come at night and eat them. Well, we noticed that they quit laying eggs there. And so when I was in here playing, look what I found. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh-oh, looks like we have another egg in there. So it looks, uh, looks like we found our new place where they're laying eggs. I worked on this, did all the, the weeding out of here. Most of what you see left in there are just perennials. These are first year, so none of them are going to look that great. I don't know what that is. Hang on. And then I went down through here and cleaned up my fever few and all of that so that Hubs would have a more definitive line when he mows. So I got a little bit done yesterday. Not enough. Look at my tree. It's just beautiful. I love fall. It's my favorite time of year. So till next time, friends, be blessed and be a blessing.